brothers and sisters, when Thomas Jefferson took office as President of the United States in 1801, he had a vision for America. His vision was America was to be an empire of liberty. That empire of liberty was to be a commonwealth of farmers who took responsibility for their lives. There was to be a limited and decentralized federal government. The focus was upon the individual and how he brought blessings to himself and to other people. Thomas Jefferson's vision was rather romantic and idyllic. It took the War of 1812 to smash it to smithereens. It took that war to empower Americans to change, to move beyond a very simplistic understanding of themselves, a romantic vision of a liberty, an empire of liberty, where there was no centralized focus of the government. There was no way that America could compete in a world where England, France, and Spain were going all over the earth for the world's riches. America was caught up in a cauldron of competition, which she could not avoid. She had to change, and change she did. In 1801, Americans had no conception of the fact that they were even a nation after the War of 1812. America put into place a mighty engine that would become a great nation, a nation whose manufacturing sector would be the envy of the world. A wise person once said that change comes bearing gifts. The gift that change bears is a better you. Change has a way of opening you up to other perspectives to the point that you be begin to appreciate other perspectives. You begin to appreciate other ways of looking at life. You grow and you become whole as a result of change. But in order to accept the salutary effects of change, you have to have the courage to be the Christians at the city of Macedonia had the courage to be. They had the courage to be whole. They had the courage to reach outside of themselves, despite their poverty and their lack, to have an influence upon the people around them. Wholeness has three dimensions. The first dimension of wholeness is the length of your life. The length of your life has nothing to do with longevity. It has nothing to do with the amount of days that you live on earth. The length of your life is the calling on your soul. It's the calling on your life. It is the calling that pushes you out and provides length so that you influence the people around you. It pushes you out so that you can indeed touch the folks around you. Look at the Macedonian Christians. They had length. Look what Paul says about them. He says, For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Well, how did that happen? That they had extreme Poverty, and yet from that extreme poverty came joy that created an abundance that blessed them and the people around them. Yes, indeed, that was the push on their soul, the push on their heart. That was the length of their heart, meaning that they found something deep within themselves. They found Christ Jesus inside of them. They did not define themselves by their poverty, did not define themselves by their lack, Instead, they defined themselves by Christ in them. And they were able to push themselves out and have a great influence. That was the length of their lives, a wonderful dimension of wholeness that is so necessary if one is to be whole. What is the length of your life? 
What is being pushed out of your soul? Do you push out anxiety that touches people around you? Do you push out bitterness and guilt so that that affects the people around you? What do you push out of your soul? What's the calling upon your soul? What's the calling upon your life? And how far does it take you in influencing the people around you? Jesus says, judge not and you will not be judged. The measure with which you judge and measure life, that's the measure with which you shall be judged and you shall be measured. Meaning that if you are pushing out judgment, pushing out bitterness, then you diminish the length of your life, the capacity of your life, the capacity for wholeness. What's the calling on your life? And what does that calling push outside of your soul? Another dimension important to wholeness is that of breath, the breath of life, or the width of life. The breath of life is your concern for other people. It is how you embrace other people in love. Paul makes an important point about these Macedonian Christians when he says that they begged earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. They had a broad expanse. They had a huge breath whereby they wanted to serve and to love people. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. They wanted to emulate Jesus, and they did just that because they loved Jesus. And they also knew that in serving the poor saints in Jerusalem, they would experience some kind of joy by serving the body of Christ that was suffering in that far away country in Jerusalem to which none of them had gone. They were to experience healing the body of Jesus Christ. They had a broad breath. They had love and concern for people, and it showed. What is the breath of your life? The breath of your life will be determined by all of us, most likely, at your funeral. Your funeral will tell us the breath of your life and whether you had concern and love for other people. About three weeks ago, I was visiting Peter Hughes, whom you all know and love, whose wife Nancy died a couple of years ago, a beloved woman. We talked about a number of things, and we especially talked about her life. When I get with widows or widowers, I like to talk about the lives of the people whom they love to show that they're still alive, not just in memory, but in presence in Christ Jesus. Stir up the good memories. Talk about them. Celebrate them. So we talked about Nancy's life. And we talked about her funeral, which was a testimony of the breath of Nancy's life. Her loving disposition was proven by her funeral because at that funeral there were all kinds of people, and this is for a woman in their mid-70s, people of all races, of all ages, in all backgrounds, all circumstances, a very diverse funeral for a woman that old, a funeral you would have expected for someone in his 20s or 30s. But that showed the breath of Nancy's life. She had a wide breath wherein she showed concern and love and compassion to other people. If you are unhappy, my dear brothers and sisters, then go make somebody else happy. And in doing that, you will indeed be made happy because you will indeed broaden your breath. You will show love and concern. And fundamentally, you will be like Jesus. And that will indeed bless you. It is indeed a wonderful thing to be just like Jesus. So to be whole, to be complete, there must indeed be important dimensions. The dimension of breath, the dimension of length, but then one final dimension, the dimension of height. That is the spiritual connection that you have with God. What wise man said that God made us with holes, that only God could fill. In other words, we have to pay attention to our hearts. 
and allow God to fill our hearts with his love and with his compassion and all that God wants to do to bring healing to our lives. The Macedonian Christians also had this dimension in their lives. Paul says they first gave themselves to the Lord. In other words, before they did anything of significance, they would pray. And their prayer was an invitation of God into their lives. Their prayer proved that they lived, they moved, and they had their being in God. And they trusted God. And so any significant decision was preceded by prayer. Prayer is our vital connection to God. Prayer is indeed sometimes the way to determine whether you're close to your Lord in word and sacrament. Because if you're close to your Lord in word and sacrament, you're going to pray more. You'll pray before you eat, but you'll especially pray before the difficult decisions that you might have to make. The Civil Rights Movement was buttressed with much prayer and singing. It began in prayer. It was sustained in prayer. And there was a lot of singing that sustained and gave power to the people, especially as they waited in hope for God to move in a wonderful way to bring about the fulfillment of their cause. The music of the civil rights era was indeed a prayer, a prayer that brought so much joy to the people who had indeed difficulties. So what is your relationship with God? It determines the wholeness in your life, the completeness in your life. Abraham Lincoln is one of my three heroes in life. Abraham Lincoln expressed all these dimensions of life. Early on as a child, the length of his life was quite obvious. Because as a child, he had a voracious appetite for books. He read many, many books, and he also had a sense that God would take him places. When the politicians would come into town and do their politicking, Abraham Lincoln, as a young child, would get up on a stump and mimic the politicians down to the T, to the amusement and the entertainment of all the other kids. So the length of his life was already in evidence. So was indeed the breadth of his life. You see, his mother died when he was a young child. So all of his life, he was a sensitive child, sensitive to the sufferings and to the, and to the pains and difficulties of other people. He was open to that. So he was the right kind of person to be open to the struggles of African Americans and be the one on the heels of bringing about a revolution to change America because of that sensitivity, which he fundamentally had. There was also a height to Abraham Lincoln's life. He had a spiritual dimension that over time that evolved and developed. It took some time, but it evolved and developed in the, in the context of much tragedy. His children died. And because of that, and because of that, and because also fighting the, the, uh, the Civil War, he kept going to the Bible, kept going to the Psalms, memorizing them, being empowered by the Word of God, having a connection with God, experiencing the height of God in the devastation of that time. How do you be whole? You must pay attention to the length of your life, the breadth of your life, and the height of your life, and the change that occurs in your life invites you to do just that because the change can open up in you further dimensions of growth in those three things that make you whole and complete like the Macedonian Christians. Amen. Amen.